Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Cinderella Phenomenon. So, let's jump right back in. <clears throat> Varge gestures at me. I glare at Varge before turning my gaze to Alcaster. I used to think Alcaster was someone to be respected. Not anymore. Well, obviously. If it isn't the princess herself. You remember who I am. Once Mithros made the connection, it was just too obvious to be false. Could Sir Mithros remember me? Alcaster shifts his attention to the king. Gennaro, do you not remember this girl as your own blood daughter? My eyes meet the king's, but I see no recognition in his gaze. He cannot remember me. I haven't managed to break my curse yet. Why are you doing this to my father, to the kingdom? Everything I do, I do for the kingdom. All successful rulers have run with an iron fist. Fear is the best motivation. A king that is too lenient and does not inspire fear has no business being on the throne. But the people of Angia love their king. Before I had thought that the town people were despicable because they hated me. Now I understand those reasons. They may have judged me. As, er, as mother's daughter, which is wrong, but... But that does not mean they should sub or be subject to a regime of fear. Your obligation as a ruler is to rule for the country, not the people. When the queen was still alive and this place knew the fear of, or of the witches, they were far more productive. Fear motivates. Fear makes a man... King Elcaster! You better have a good excuse for interrupting. Your Highness, there's a beast. What are you blathering about, you fool? A beast, a magical beast, is rampaging through the palace. Is this the dead witch is doing? Dead? Witch? No, no, Dolores, is fine. She has to be. Out with it. Did Mithros do this? What? I cannot st or stop myself from blurting out the question. <coughs> Sir Mithros is a witch. He was a witch, but now he is dead. He turns to his knight and demands more information. I am too shocked to hear their words. Sir Mithros? A witch? Impossible! What of the other palace intruders? We've managed to apprehend some of them, but we can't get to everyone with that beast taking us out. That damned Mithros, still a pain even after death. What did you do to Sir Mithros? Did you not hear me, girl? He is dead, killed by my hand. But why? He was helpful at first. We worked together to achieve our own personal goals. He eyes me cautiously. He wanted you, princess. If Sir Mithros was a witch, that would explain why he still remembered me. Why did he want me? Who knows? It doesn't matter anymore. I gave him my knights uh, to assist him in his search when the witches could not. But in the end, that fool was too power hungry. You never in er, entered into my plans. You would have been safe, princess, had you just stayed put. But now that you're here, you'll come in handy. Alcaster turns back to the knight, who immediately bursts into explanation once more. The beast is moving quickly. We don't ha or we don't know how much longer we can keep it from this room. There's a beast in the palace, and it's Sir Mithros is doing. I am so confused. And what about the others? Are they okay? Let me go, Alcaster. You are not going anywhere. It sounds like some of your friends are very persistent. They'll be coming for you. And when they get here, I will kill them. You, princess, are going to make an er, make excellent bait. You know, I like this turn of events. Kind of amusing. You, tell me what all of this is. Varge looks unmoved by Alcaster's anger. It, er, it is Mithros that summoned this beast, is it not? Then you must know what is happening. You're asking me, of all people... Ha! As if I would be able to answer any of your questions. You. Varge! 
It doesn't matter how many times you say my name, Alcaster. I won't have any answers for you. Sir Alcaster turns to me, his eyes manic. Whether this is Mithros's magic or magic belonging to one of your friends, I'm not going to let it live. Could Dolora create a beast out of thin air? Sir Alcaster draws his sword from his sheath and curses under his breath. I squirm, desperate to find some kind of break in my restraints. Varge surprises me, however, by reaching down and cutting the ropes, binding my arms with the sword that I recognize. You have my sword! I stand up as quickly as I can and grab the sword from him. That was too easy! Ugh, excuse me. My eye varge warily and his mouth twists into a smirk. What are you doing? Why are you helping me? Help? All I did was cut some ropes. Besides, I'm curious to see what'll, or what you'll do with that toothpick of a sword. He talks like he doesn't care at all what happens. Don't think about it too much, princess. It's probably a little too much for your small head. I swing my sword toward him and Varge catches it with his cane. <coughs> you really think that I'm, or that I'm the one you should be fighting? The door creaks and falls off its hinges. The knights stumble back and I hear screaming as loud footsteps again, or sound against the hall's tiles. So what'll you do? Run? Hide? Or will the beast kill you too? My eyes focus on the large figure entering the room. Though I cannot make out specifics at first, the form grows more distant or distinct the further it moves into the room. Whatever this is, I cannot fight it. There is a moment of eerie silence, and then Alcaster yells and the knights rush forward, attacking the beast as a collective. The beast throws them off, a surprising nimbleness, his rage in every swipe. I dodge away just before a man's body falls on top of me. Over here, beast! Sir Alcaster rushes at the beast. I finally managed to get a clear line of sight to the king, who is still bound and helpless on the throne. The king? I have to get him out of here! I run toward the throne, but someone stops me dead in my tracks. Saving the king really shouldn't be your priority right now. I grip my teeth and swing my sword at Varge, but he easily darts away from me. I would be watching my back. It is then that I notice the beast slowly making its way toward me. Why would it be after me? Either I stay here and fend, or fend it off, or... Alcaster catches the beast with a broad swipe of his sword, and the two are focused once more on each other. I glance urgently at the king, then at the doors. The beast moves again, and I realize that it is once more heading towards me. There is no way I can help the king in all of this mess. I... I need help. I have to find the others. Hopefully Alcaster will keep this beast busy long enough for me to get them. I turn and bolt through the room, weaving my way through the chaos of knights as I head toward the door. I glance over my shoulder one last time at the king. His eyes are trained on the battle before him. His hands grip, in, or grip the arms of his throne, but there's nothing he can do. I am so sorry I'll be back, but for now I have to find the others. I dart past the carnage in the room, stepping over and around bodies as they appear. Halfway to the door, the beast lunges past Sir Alcaster, and for a few moments, I think he might be attacking me. Stay back! I hold my sword out in front of me and stand in a defensive position like Claude taught me, but the beast never reaches me. <clears throat> You've ruined everything, beast! Alcaster is suddenly in front of me, waving his sword at the beast. I stumble back toward the door, my heart beating loudly in my chest. I have to get out of here! Chapter 10 The Beauty and the Sinner Where did this beast come from? Knights immediately rush toward me. I back away as far as I can without re entering the throne room. <coughs> Princess! Come quietly and we'll keep you somewhere safe until all of this dies down. I raise my sword and stand ready when the knights surround me. I order you to stay out of my way. Our apologies, princess, but we are under orders from the king. Alcaster is not the true king. What did he offer you for your loyalty, wealth, status? That is none of your concern. 
One of the knights moves toward me, and I react on instinct, swiping at him. You might want to put that down before you hurt yourself, princess. Do not antagonize me. One knight rushes me, and my blade connects with his shoulder. Another approaches me from behind, and I hit him with the back of my sword. The third moves too fast for me, and I feel his blade cut into my shoulder. I hiss at, or at the pain that stings from the wound. I'm bleeding. The next time he swings, I successfully manage to evade him, but then bump into another knight. I'm surrounded. Just come with us, princess. We don't want to hurt you. No! I feel one of the knight's hands on my shoulder. I attempt to pull away from him, but stop when I hear him scream. The beast stays, er, stands behind me, eyes narrowed, its mouth gaping wide. A scream escapes my throat. The knights change their focus to attacking the beast, but it easily swipes them away as it advances toward me. It's getting closer. I desperately back up. However, my back soon hits a wall, and with nowhere else to go, I stand in the defensive position that Claude has taught me. I hold out the sword, and then use it to throw back the beast's shadowed claws as he reaches out for me. That stance. It talks! Stay away from me! The beast moves toward me again, and I stumble in place, struggling to hold my ground. The knight uh, throws his sword, the blade impaling itself into the beast's shoulder and giving me an opening. The beast's wounded arm swings into my reach, and I lash out with my sword, managing to draw blood. Princess, Dolora would never create a beast like this. This has to be Sir Mithros's doing. An attacking knight catches the beast's attention, and I do not wait. As the beast turns, I raise my sword and manage to slice it deep into the beast's chest. No! A piercing cry erupts from somewhere deep in its throat, and I stumble back without my sword, which is still stabbed through the creature's heart. Oh gosh. The beast collapses to the ground. I stare as it raises a hand to its chest. That motion reminds me so much of... Right. It was all an illusion. A glimmer of light catches my eye. I freeze as I stare down at the ground. Right there, where the blood is already pooling around the sword in the beast's chest, is a rose-shaped locket. The locket I gave Claude! Why would- or why do you- The beast stares up at me with glassy eyes, its mouth barely moving. After a few moments, a low rumbling comes from the beast's throat, and I realize that it is grisly- or that it is a grisly pa pained chuckle. Afraid of me, I told you. The beast stares at me, unblinking, but its eyes are already beginning to haze over. The way it speaks and the locket that it has. I look at the locket again and the blood is seeping beneath the surface and I suddenly I realize. If I ever told you the reason, you would hate me, Melody, or more accurately, you would be afraid of me. No, no, no! I kneel down beside the beast. I was wrong. No, 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 Claude! I clutch the locket to my chest as I kneel over the beast. Claude, no, please! I lean down to listen to his breathing, but there is nothing but silence. Everything around me goes dark. I killed him. There is the sound of footsteps be uh, behind me, but they are mute, unimportant. Claude! I'm so sorry. The end. All right. So that was Claude's bad ending. <laughs> so next time that I play this, we are going to go straight into the good ending. Which, damn. That was awesome. Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. I'll just leave it. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, yeah, like I said, the next time that I play this game, we are going to come back to Claude's route and we are going to do his good ending. So I'm going to have to start from the very beginning because that's how this game works. <laughs> and like I said, the next route that I do, I will be doing their good ending first and then doing their bad ending. So I can skip through all the choices. So anyways... 
If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!